G'day mates, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you all the best tips and tricks from Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 6. Everything from rotation tricks to exploits, just some of these are absolutely ridiculous. They're so simple to learn and next to no one is doing them or talking about them. So no one even knows how to counter them. By the time this video comes out, Arena Points should be resetting today or tomorrow, depending on where you are in the world. You want to know these because they're going to help you win so many more games. And like I said, a lot of these really haven't been discovered that much yet with addition of all the new items there's so many ridiculous ones even right down to being able to guarantee grab someone's wall using a bow like i'm talking exploits that are going to be insane probably maybe gonna get fixed or patched eventually but let's talk about them let me show you so you have the edge on all your opponents Remember guys, as always, when I do these videos, I'm gonna credit everyone in the description down below. So if there's any clip or any trick that you particularly like, you wanna share it with your friends, make sure you go check them out before you share it so they get the love as well. They're the ones who came up with them, they're the ones who shared them, so they deserve the credit. Let's start off with Cuttlefish. You've probably seen this. This item is gonna have to be nerfed, vaulted, fixed. Something has to happen. Right now, Cuttlefish are insanely broken for so many reasons. Let's just start off with the main one. The fact that you can easily use two of them to phase one into the box and do 500 damage 500 damage to the player or any players inside a box. You can full wipe an entire trio with two cuttlefish and it has zero counterplay. Let's start off with the clip that made everyone realize just how broken these things were gonna be. Vre dropped this on update night. As you can see, he throws two cuttlefish on the cone. He shoots one with a shotgun. The other one falls in and instantly wipes the opponent. So it's that simple. Let's talk about a few things you need to make sure you do to not mess this up though. If you shoot it with an AR, it will not work. It is always way more reliable with a shotgun. You also want to try and make sure that you throw the cuttlefish on different sides of the cone. It's kind of like when you do an RPG phase in where you want to be able to hit on the other side of the cone to the one you're standing on. The way cones work with blast radius is they kind of deflect the blast radius. So if you throw cuttlefish on one side of the cone and then on the other side of the cone, this one won't explode this one. And that's what you want. If you both throw them next to each other or on the same edge, they just explode and they blow each other up. You need to be able to throw it so they're on opposite sides so when you blow one up it breaks the build and the other one falls in and that's what makes it explode inside the box now let's show you what that looks like from another person's perspective oh, oh, oh. I, need, I need a big i don't have any gun fish gun fish i'm dead nice oh you're so trolling fun, bro this game is yeah, so GG. bad GG. Yeah, so as you can see, Savage inside a box with his two teammates playing scrim stacked. They're full boxed up. They're in hard mats and you hear Savage say cuddle fit and they're dead. That's what I mean. There is no counterplay to this. If this is happening to you, you hear the little cuddle fish sound. Oh, that sounds cute. And you're dead. It's that simple. You can't put a cone on your head. You can't sit in under a stair. You can't sit under double mats. If you're inside the box, they're throwing the cuttlefish on the roof of, as you can see with that blast radius as well, you and your entire team are going to die. Let's take a look at what it looks like from the other team's perspective. Now, this isn't the same clip. This isn't the two perspectives, but this is pretty much what it looks like if you're the one doing it. And same thing, throws the cuttlefish down, throws down all three. Technically, you only need two, but three is good if they're spread out in those boxes. You'll notice this potentially wouldn't have worked if that one cuttlefish didn't bounce around the side of the cone. You can try throwing them all on top of each other. Sometimes it works. I've just found it far, far more reliable if you throw it on different sides. But again, literally walk up, Two or three cuttlefish, pump, gone. The entire team is wiped. You have all their loot and all the points. This is this surely has to be vaulted, but at this point, it's still in the game. Well, using cuttlefish this way is a guaranteed kill and it's really, really strong. I found in solos is a better way that was actually popularized by Martos. You can kind of use the cuttlefish almost like an RPG phase in. You can throw the cuttlefish on the wall, jump up like you would on an RPG, land down so you're behind that cone where it explodes. Because again, be careful with cuttlefish. If you jump and then shoot it while you're at the top of your jump, it's going to blow up on you. You fall in. You get the easy pump shot and you dominate them. It's exactly like the RPG phase in. And I know what you're going to say, why would you do this when you can just phase the cuttlefish in and it's less risky? Well, cuttlefish drop in stacks of three. And if you're playing solos, you're going to use at least two to kill one person in the box. You're left with just one. So this is a really good option to then use the remaining one that you have. Or you have three. That's three potential phase ins. I mean, yes, it's a little bit riskier, but I guarantee the player down below won't be expecting it. Most people will be expecting when they hear the cuttlefish 
cuttlefish to be getting the cuttlefish elimination where it explodes and they just die. They're probably not expecting to have to try and track you through the roof like people do with the RPG. So I love this trick. And of course, give it to Martos to come up with this one. Also worth mentioning, like you saw in the clip there from Martos, you can throw it on the wall as well. Just make sure that again, you're tucked behind the cone. I found the most consistent way to do this without having issues of hitting yourself is throwing it on the opposite edge of the cone, jumping and using it like an RPG phase in. But you've got to be careful on the timing because these things have a big, big blast radius. Just do whichever one's more comfortable for you. The last major trick I've seen with the cuttlefish is a bit of a meme strap, but it could really work, especially in trios if you want to aggressively push an entire team or just have some fun in solos. I mean, you can actually throw the cuttlefish on a vehicle and then you can use that to detonate and to blow the person up. So it's kind of like when you used to throw C4 on a shopping cart or any of those kind of meme strats. I know it's not super competitive, but I guarantee if someone pulls this off in an interesting way in trios, I mean, all you gotta do, maybe throw some cuttlefish on a vehicle when there's a team boxed up beneath you on a mountain, just drive off, get out of the vehicle, shoot it. I mean, I can really see some good team applications for this one or just some meme strats. Before I move on to some of the tricks about road rotation because those are super handy. This is one that I actually found on the Fortnite comp Reddit that makes the makeshift shotgun so much stronger. Everyone's complaining, myself included. The makeshift shotgun only has two pellets and the reload time is so insanely slow. Except if you're taking your two shots and you're reloading your third shot and you keep pressing fire, the reload is so much faster. Just look at this. I have swear I have made this joke so many times on stream. I'm sitting there reloading my makeshift. I have the XQC vibes come into my head. I can go make a baked dinner. I can go to the bathroom. I can come back up and my makeshift still isn't reloaded. But if you do this, look how fast that reload is. In a fight, that is huge. That gives you so much potential to get your third shot off. I have tested this as well. If you take a single shot and then you kind of back behind a build or an edit and then you step out for your second shot reload, third shot, it still does work. You don't have to shoot all three in a row. You just need to shoot your last pellet out, start the reload animation and keep clicking fire. You guys have probably seen a bunch of these door exploits and I need to burst the bubble here. I need to let you know they only work in creative or battle lab. They don't work in real games. For some reason, when you're doing like the door open physics in a real game, it doesn't work like this. But I wanted to include it because again, I found this on the comp Reddit and it looks really, really cool for creative. You're 1v1ing friends. You're in a wager. You're doing something like that. I don't see why you can't bring this out. All you got to do is be able to jump up, get into the right spot on the stair. When you then open the stair, it'll throw you in a certain direction, you can then use that to phase straight into the back of someone's box. You can come up with so many interesting ways to do it. As you've seen here, this is a fantastic way to do it. The other spot you're seeing a lot of people talk about the door rotates is just using it in Battle Lab. Unfortunately, it looks like a real game. People going to Battle Lab, standing on the stair, closing it, and then going flying. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is the new rotation. It's like the EJ dash on steroids. I got really excited. Unfortunately, it does only work in Battle Lab. Same with the chicken door rotate. If you look at this clip here again, people grab the chicken, they close the door. Like everything with the chicken, you get low gravity, you go even further, but I can't really see a use for this because it only works in Battle Lab and Creative, but I've seen this clip going everywhere and not enough people are talking about that. So I wanted to include it to make sure you didn't go and try this in an actual tournament and realize it doesn't work. While on the topic of chicken rotates, I've obviously got to include this one. A bunch of people saw it. NRG Shorts posted it. It went super viral. It's Banshee Fishy hitting the spire with the chicken. But this is what's opened up a lot of people to realize this is actually a really good rotational strat. It's only really going to work in solos unless you and your teammate has a chicken because obviously you're going to go flying. The only way you're going to get that max distance effect is if you're holding onto the chicken. But you can always let go of the chicken at any point and you won't take fall damage because you've gone off the spire. So this is still a fantastic fantastic rotational strat. Obviously, if you didn't know as well, you can always just hit the spires and hit your glider. I don't see enough people using it. If you take the spire orb up there as well, you hit the spire and you go even further because the spire orb gives you that kind of uh, low gravity, which when you then apply with the spire, you go even further. But that time you can't pull your glider as well. So that doesn't really work for team rotations. Both of these are more a solo rotate strat, but they're really, really good to use in arena or pubs just to get around the map that little bit faster. 
While on the topic of the spires, though, somebody's gun made a fantastic video. And again, I'll link that in the description down below. Please check it out. Please show him some love. He's putting out some great tips and tricks and guide content. There's a few kind of variants that he showed of how you can use the spire to direct your approach, which is insane. Again, I'm going to pick out the ones that I like the most. So when using the spire, obviously, they always send you one direction. But by putting builds around them, kind of like a launch pad, you can really influence how those builds direct you and which way you want to go. For example, somebody's gun shows off the high wall. Uh, kind of variation where if you build high walls it'll send you straight up and then you can fly backwards in the opposite direction which I'm talking about using these in scrims right if you're rotating you're on dead side right now zone goes max behind you you don't want to kind of have to walk that distance if you can just fly it that one's a fantastic one but my favorite by far is walking up putting a floor editing a cone in the direction you want to go and then kind of crouching back into the spire hitting that cone not only does it send you the exact diagonal direction you want look how much faster it is you don't pull your glider and there is no way you're going to get beamed so i can really imagine people in scrims and tournaments setting up on top of the spire up here and then using those directional rotations to try and get down quicker where they're not just going to get beamed out of the sky by just jumping up and pulling your glider really slowly some of these are actually really really useful now, the last trick I was hoping to show you was going to be some sick bow phasing. I was talking to Martos because I was asking to make sure he didn't mind if I used his clips. He was like, yeah, man, I'm pretty sure like the bow phasing is going to work. It used to be really, really strong. I was like, sick. I wanted to creative. No, it doesn't work. The bow shoots way too high now. There is no way that you can kind of do that slow trajectory like you used to do with the explosive bow to take the wall. So I'm sorry on that one. That one does not work. But the rest, I promise you, they do work. Blame Martos. He got me excited thinking I was going to revolutionize the game. All right, guys, that does it for another video. You guys have been loving the guy content. I've been loving making it. I'm going to do some videos over the next few days of my arena gameplay as well, most likely. Points are going to reset. I want to get to champs as fast as I can. I want to do like one day challenges. How long does it take me to get champs? How many points can I get in five hours, six, 10? Play with some pros, stuff like that. Make some fun content. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section down below. It'll motivate me even more to make it. If you like today's video, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And let me know in the comments as well. If there's any other exploits or cool tricks you know of that I didn't include, put them in the comments so I can give you some credit and show the world because I'd love nothing more. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.